In this video we'll take a look at naming lines on our grid. Using numbers for our lines does mean that we need to keep track of where items are on our grid, so it might be easier to assign names to those lines and then place the items by line name rather than number. I've got a grid here and it defines a simple layout. We've got a header, and a sidebar, a main article, and a footer. I've created this grid, it's a two column track grid, and I'm placing those items using line numbers. To name the lines, I add the name in square brackets in the position in the track listing where that line comes. Now remember that the values in the track listing, they define the track, not the line. You don't need to name all of your lines, I'm just going to name the lines around the main content area. So that comes here, and I'm going to name them Content Start and Content End. So you can see that the naming happens in the square brackets. I didn't create any rows initially because I was just relying on the implicit grid, but if we want to name the lines in our rows, we are actually going to need to create some, so let's do that now. And I'm just going to say auto and then content start and auto and content end. So again, I only need to create the rows that I want to name lines around. Any additional rows will be created by the implicit grid. So I now have some names for those lines. I can go down and find my article. And then I can say start on column line, content start. And on row line, content start. And everything stays exactly the same. We're just now using our named lines by column and by row rather than those numbers. What using line names enables is that you can keep the same line names even if you redefine the grid for different breakpoints. If I add a media query for my two column layout, then I can create a one column layout for mobile devices for small screen widths. So I've got a media query here for minimum width 640 pixels. And within that, I'm going to just put this columns definition. So outside of my media queries, I'm defining a grid. And I'm going to create a new grid template columns track listing. And here I'm just going to say content start one fraction unit content end. So this is defining a single column track grid. If we take this smaller, we can see that it all starts to look a bit strange. And this is because our main article has been correctly positioned by line name but the other items are being positioned by their line numbers and once we go to the narrow breakpoint, we don't actually have that two track grid. So to sort this out, we're going to need to move the positioning information, the line numbers positioning information inside the media queries. And if I did want to redefine where they were on the grid, I'd actually need to have some rules here which then were overwritten by these rules. So you can see that using the line names, if you're careful as you're defining your grid, you can define the grid, you can name your lines, and then you don't need to go inside your media queries and reposition items. They'll position themselves based on the name of the line at every breakpoint that you put in. So this is something you can be thinking about as you're starting to design grids. Name the lines, and then you can save yourself quite a lot of work as you add new breakpoints.